Hi guys, my name is Ryan, and in this video, I'm going to be teaching you how to make this little backpack. It's quite a long video, but I promise you that if you stick through it, you will not be disappointed. So when I started designing this backpack, I looked at a lot of 80s and 90s backpacks for inspiration. I like things with a lot of bold colors and interesting shapes, but the brand that really stuck out to me was a brand called Moku Yobi. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but I really love their brand and no, this is not sponsored or a promo, but I personally really am inspired by them, so that's why I'm showing all their cute stuff. Definitely check them out, you will not regret it. I drew this diagram sort of Ikea style to go along with the pattern because I know that there are a lot of pieces and I'm hoping that it'll make it a lot easier. Um, so first I'm just going to show you all the pieces and then I'm going to show you how to make all the special shaped pieces that maybe are a little more advanced. So the first pieces are A, which is the front and the back, and no, it doesn't have to have that pink part, they should probably both be yellow, I just ran out of yarn. The second piece is piece B, it's going to be the bottom, and I made two just because I wanted the bottom to be super sturdy and structural, and again, they should probably both be the same color, I just ran out of yarn, per usual. And the next two pieces are piece E, which is going to be your two side panels. Then you're going to make four little rectangles for piece D, which is going to be above those side panels on either side of the zipper. Next you're going to make two pieces for part C, which is going to go on either side of the zipper. Here you can see all of those pieces laid out, sort of map style, just so you can understand where each of the pieces are going to be going. On one of the side panels, you're going to have part F, which is a pocket, and it's going to come in three pieces. Then we have piece I, which is a water bottle holder, water bottle holder, and it's going to come in two pieces. Then we have the pieces for H, which are two little envelope pockets on the front of the bag, and they come in three pieces. Next up is going to be piece J, which is going to be a little strap on the back, which is going to secure all the other straps. Next, you're going to make two of these M straps, which are going to then become the handles for the bag. Part K is going to be the two shoulder straps that you're going to need if you actually want to wear this backpack instead of just carry it around. Don't mind the messy ends that I did, that's irrelevant to the pattern, I just am a mess. Next for part L, you're going to make these two shoulder pads, which I ended up not actually liking. I think maybe if I had made them a bit longer, they would work better. I don't know, it's up to you. If you want it, make it. If you don't, cool. For part N, you're going to make these two little triangles, and these are just going to really secure the straps to the bottom of the bag. And this is what all the pieces look like when you lay them out. I know it kind of looks like a lot, but I promise you, if you do it, it will totally be worth it. So in order to do this project, you're going to need worsted weight yarn and you're going to need a 3.5 millimeter crochet hook. Here I'm just going to show you a basic crochet refresher course. This is called a slip knot. You're going to make a loop and then you're going to put the yarn behind that loop and you're going to pull it up and there's a slip knot and then you're going to put it on your crochet hook. There are a million different ways to hold the yarn in your hand. Just do whatever feels comfortable to you. I do it like that around my finger and my pinky, but it's really not all that important. So in order to get good tension, I like to pinch the bottom of the stitch. And then to make a chain, you're just going to wrap the hook around the yarn and pull up. 
and you're just gonna do that over and over and over and over again and as soon as I have a few stitches in my chain I just move up my two fingers so that I have good tension So you can't actually crochet into the first stitch so when I mean 19 chains it's gonna give you 18 stitches because you can't go into that chain so you're gonna go into the second chain with your hook like that and then you're going to go around the yarn you're gonna pull up a loop then you're gonna have two loops on your hook like that and then you're gonna go around the yarn again and go through those two loops and then boom, you got a stitch. Now you just do that over and over and over again. And when you get to the end of the row, all you have to do is chain up one and turn around and then start again on your next row. Now that you're on a real row, you're going to see the stitches as V's and you want to go through both those loops of the V when you make a single crochet. Now I'm going to show you how to make part G, which is the front pocket on the backpack. The side panel of the pocket is five stitches, so you're going to chain six and then single crochet the designated length of the side of the pocket. Now that the strip is long enough, you're going to do a special row of ribbing to turn the corners so you get a nice sharp edge. So you're going to chain up one, turn it around, and you're only going to single crochet in the front of the stitches. So you got that V and you're only going to go in the front loop and this is called a front loop single crochet. And here you can see why I do it. It really gives you a sharp angle and I really like that in this design just so it keeps everything sort of boxy. Next you're going to single crochet the length of the bottom of the pocket and I'm going to show you how to turn the other corner. Sometimes it's the same, sometimes it's different. In this case it is different. So you're actually going to crochet in the back of the stitches instead of the front of the stitches like you did previously. This is what that finished piece looks like. Eventually we're going to sew it to all sides of the pocket and you're going to have a nice little shape. Next for this pocket I'm going to show you how to make the closure, the folding flap on the front. You're going to chain the designated amount and then you're going to single crochet one row. Then we're going to do another special row of front loop crochet as I'm showing now.
Then you're going to do a couple more rows, as you see here, to get the width of the pocket. And now we're going to do one more special row, and we're going to turn another corner for the bottom of the flap. Here you can see both the folds on the flap. You're just going to add a couple more plain rows and then you're done. Again, this should probably all be in red. I just ran out as per usual, so don't mind the yellow there. Now I'm going to show you how to make the little envelope closure. It's actually pretty similar to the other flap, except this time you're going to add decreasing so that you get that nice triangular shape. I'm not going to show you how to do the first part because it'll be in the pattern, but I'm going to show you how you do the decreases. So you're going to turn the corner, and I like to do the decreases like one stitch in, so you're going to do one single crochet. And then to do a decrease, what you're going to do is you're going to put your hook in the front loops of both stitch one and stitch two and then you're going to pull through those two loops so now you got two loops on your hook and you're going to go through those two and now you turn two stitches into one and you're going to do that on both sides and here i am showing it again again you just go through both front loops of stitch one and two and then you wrap the hook around the yarn to get you one loop then you'll have two loops on the hook and you go through both of those and that's a decrease and then you do the last stitch and you're golden. So once you get to the final four you're going to do one single crochet, one decrease, one single crochet and then eventually you're going to have three stitches and I just like to go through all three stitches and do one big decrease and that gets you sort of a nice finish at the end. I don't bother going through the front loops here, I just go through the whole stitch and I go in one, two, three and you're going to have four loops on your hook and you're just going to go through all of them. Next up is the water bottle holder. The pocket part is pretty simple, it's just a rectangle, but the bottom is a circle with a square on the end. So here I'm showing you how to make a magic loop. So you make a loop on your finger and then I take the hook and I just chain three, two, three, and that gets you sort of a loop that you can tighten with the string at the bottom there. So now you're just going to make six single crochet inside the loop. Then you're going to yank that end as hard as you can. You want to make sure it's really tight because you don't want a hole in the middle of your circle. I like to use a contrasting color piece of yarn as a stitch marker just to help remind me where I am. And I just wrap it around the hook at the front of the row. So for this first row, all you're going to do is increase in every stitch. And in crochet, that just means that you're going to crochet two single crochet in every single crochet.
and the next row you're just going to single crochet one single crochet and then in the next stitch increase so one increase Zooming along to four increase, you're going to do the next row, which is going to get you that square piece at the bottom. And to do that, you're going to do single crochet four, a three increase where you put three single crochet into one stitch, seven more single crochet, another three stitch increase, and then four single crochet. Next up are the little triangle pieces at the bottom of the backpack straps. This is very simple. It's a lot like the envelope closure we did before, except you're only going to decrease on one side of the fabric. And you're going to do the same thing that you did on the envelope flap just by going through all three stitches at the end and creating one stitch. Now we're going to start sewing pieces together. I decided to do this with wrong sides facing together, which is totally wrong for sewing, but I feel like for this it actually worked better. There's not really any perfect way of doing this, I just try to catch a bump on both sides and you can see where the bumps sort of line up on both pieces of fabric, so it's not extremely hard, just make sure you make tight stitches. And you can see how this method gives you nice sharp corners. Now comes the hard part of actually sewing it to the piece of fabric. 
Um, I find it a lot easier if I use a lot of pins and I pin all sides before I start sewing. With this method, I really just tried to catch the last stitch of every row, so you're really only getting a tiny portion of the edge of the fabric. I definitely recommend that you sew all the small pieces and pockets onto the backpack pieces before you start sewing them together. For a lot of this project, I didn't leave ends long enough, so I had to use auxiliary thread. So all you have to do is make a knot and make sure you weave it in on the back side. It doesn't have to be perfect because no one's ever going to see it, but you do want to make those knots. Then comes the really fun part of weaving in all the ends that you didn't use. Wow, movie magic! That was so simple. Look how clean and pretty it is. And all you have to do to sew on the flap closure is to sew a single line of stitching down on the top. In order to close my pockets, I decided to use Velcro. So all you have to do for that is cut a little bit of each side of the Velcro and then just sew it on to the pocket and the flap and make sure that they're in correct spacing. To sew this down, I just decided to use a basic running stitch and then on the top flap so that it wouldn't show on the front side, I just did a whip stitch. With the whipped stitch, I just tried to catch a little bit of the inside of the fabric so that it wouldn't show on the other side. Yay, one pocket down, only like five more to go. <laughs>
For the bottom of the bag, I thought it would actually be better instead of sewing if you actually crocheted it together. So just make sure you have enough orange left or whatever color you choose to do this. And I make a slip knot and I just go through one stitch on both sides and then use my slip knot to make a slip stitch. And then I just start crocheting the two sides together all the way around. Now it looks all clean and crisp and pretty and you have a nice row at the bottom for when you're ready to sew it all together. And two seconds later and we're done, cause you know, movie magic. Next, you're going to sew all of these pieces together because these are the pieces that are going to be sewn to either side of your zipper. You want the edge of the crochet to actually be pretty close to the teeth of the zipper. Just make sure it's not too close or else you won't be able to use the zipper properly. I show a needle and thread but I actually decided to sew this with a sewing machine and it actually turned out pretty good and I'm lazy so yeah. To sew the water bottle holder together, I actually sewed the little bottom piece on first and then I sewed it all on as one piece to the flap. And this is what it should look like and on the bottom the circular piece the flat side should be on the bottom facing the side panel this actually turned out to be a little bit of a fail because my hydro flask is a little bit too heavy for the crochet <laughs> For the handles, I didn't really measure, I just started at the middle and sewed a little bit in the middle so you get this sort of shape. For the shoulder pads, all you have to do is simply sew up that seam. This is the part of the project where I started using the sewing machine a little bit more just because I was kind of tired and lazy. So what you're going to do is sew the straps down on the back of the backpack and I just did a little X as you can see here and then you're going to sew the handle down in the same manner right in between the straps 
and then you're going to sew the little red strip across just to hold everything together. Just make sure that you leave a row of the backpack untouched at the top just because you need something to sew the pieces together at the end. And before you forget about it, sew the other handle onto the front of the backpack as well. And this is the top all sewn and pretty. And now we're gonna focus on the bottom and getting the straps sewn to the bottom of the backpack. It's basically the same method. I just did a square and then an X in that square on either strap. And then I added the triangle on top and just did the outlines of it and made sure that no parts of the orange strap were poking out. You don't have to use a sewing machine if you don't have one, but I do think it gave me really pretty results. Now is the amazing part where you get to finally put all the little pieces together and it actually looks like a backpack and it's awesome. At this point it's kind of chaos and there's not really any good way or like not really a good order in which to sew anything together. So I just ended up sewing everything to the front of the backpack and then sewing the back portion on and then sewing the bottom on to everything else. I think one of my only mistakes in this project is the little gaps at the top and the bottom of the zipper. I didn't really think about the extra space even though it is a 24 inch zipper so just ignore that. So at this point in the project I was so tired of filming that I didn't really film anymore but you get the idea. And now here's your backpack. To be fully transparent, I did maybe stick a shoe box in there to give it that boxy look. So it does look a little slumped when it doesn't have the box in it, but you know, whatever. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope some of you actually make this design and if you do, please tag me on Instagram so that I can see all your amazing things.